Views and Frontiers welcomes you to the Gold Rush Country. Now, we're in the Sierra Nevadas and we're actually headed towards Highway 49, the Gold Chain Highway. Now, the Gold Chain Highway is famous for its route uh, through and along the Sierra Nevadas. There's a lot of ghost towns there, but they're considered ghost towns. Uh, people still live in them today, uh, but they're old mining towns. And we're going to go there. Uh, we're going to stop along the way, see what else is cool to see. Now, many years ago, I bought this book, Ghost Towns of the Old West. And I did a pretty good job of hitting up a lot of the ghost towns in Nevada. But I also wanted to go up through the Gold Chain Highway uh, through California. I wanted to go years and years, but I never got to go up through the Gold Chain Highway. Uh, despite hitting all those ones in uh, Nevada, I was always kind of, you know, had this yearning in my heart to go up the Gold Chain Highway. And, but today I'm going to finally do it. So let me tell you something, kids. Now, never give up on your dreams, because you never know. Welcome to Coloma, Coloma, California, situated on Highway 49, where they call the Golden Chain Highway. That's where a lot of uh, mining towns were located back in the day, where they did a lot of uh, mining for gold. So we're going to take a walk around here. Now, Coloma is uh, considered a ghost town, although um, people live here. So. I'm going to show you some stuff. You can judge for yourself whether it's a ghost town or not. Uh, in my book, the book I was alluding to earlier, they they have it down as a ghost town. Uh, a lot of artifacts um, in town still, and some old relics of buildings, and maybe that's why they consider it that. And so we're going to give you uh, a couple shots of that stuff, uh, and uh, hopefully we find something interesting, and uh, we'll take it from there. here in front of the uh, Old County Jail for uh, Coloma. Yeah, the town was established in 1849. Uh, you know, 49 gold rush, the 49ers, that's how that team, football team, got the name, believe it or not. Uh, but this jail uh, was erected in 1950 and it was used from, no, excuse me, 1850. From 1850 to 1856 and it housed uh, Coloma's uh, most hardened criminals, I assume. So let's take a closer look at the old Coloma Jail. This looks like uh, the old jail cell. Okay, let's see what you got in there. Well, for some reason, there's a table still in there. Interesting. So, it doesn't look like a very big jail cell, but then again, even the ones today aren't so big. You know? How much space do you need for a criminal? Side of the jail, like I said, the notorious criminals would be housed here. So, oh, look what we have here. How'd you get in here? <laughs> this looks like some sort of like isolation, you know? All the old hot box member reminds me of like Cool Hand Luke. I guess when you really act it up from, from the main part of the jail, they sent you over here. Anna, I know you love post offices, so we've stumbled upon this post office. Now, here's my rule about ghost towns. If you have a functioning post office, you're not really a ghost town. So 
I guess they consider this um, an active ghost town or a tourist ghost town or a partial ghost town. There's all kinds of variations of ghost towns. But, if, but in my book, you're not an actual full-fledged ghost town if you have an active post office. And apparently these guys do. All right, so apparently behind me here is the old gun shop established in like 1849. I guess uh, if your old Winchester wasn't working or your pistol, your sidearm, you come here, it's square your way. So behind me is the Coloma Community Center. When was this built here? 1926, I guess this is where they would have like a wedding or something like that. So it looks like we've stumbled upon the old uh, Coloma Bridge established in eight, uh, 1915. Uh, let's go take a walk over it. It was established in 1849. It was really established to support the Sutter Mill. And we're gonna go, and go down there and take a look at that in a few minutes. But I'm, I mean, love, love this bridge. Look, spectacular views. And I'll tell you, Coloma is a beautiful place. I love it here. I mean, it's, it's spectacular. I mean, but it's not really a ghost town. I think they're just kind of clinging on to their past as an old mining town to bring in the tourists. But you know what? It's worth the stop. This town sure has a lot of activity for a supposed ghost town. I mean, the traffic that's just coming up and down the street is just relentless. I'm trying to get a quiet moment so I can, uh, you know, do a little filming. So, but we're walking on down here. We're going to check out some other stuff. So this is where they would do, um, they would use equipment like this. They would do hydraulic milling. You know, they just blast the side of the mountains with water to, to get all the sediment down and, and clear away all the, the rocks. This is it. You know, back in uh, 1849, when they discovered gold in here, people were coming from all over the country and actually all over the world. Uh, and nearby here is what they, uh, they, they established what they called the Chile mine. And that's because a lot of people from Chile were coming here to believe it, to mine these hills. So maybe we could see some equipment here. We're going to take a look around. The Chileans came up and uh, they established uh, themselves in this area around 1849 because uh, they wanted to be part of the action. They wanted to get the gold. They were here for the riches. So in a previous video, I brought up about a stamp mill. Uh, when we were at um, uh, Palmetto, uh, they used stamp mills there uh, to do their mining. And this is exactly what a stamp mill is. They would use this to crush the rocks, this big apparatus to just pound the rocks down. Pretty impressive. So if you, can, uh, if you know anything about mining history, especially during the gold rush era, uh, a lot of laborers came over from China to work uh, the mining camps. And I don't know if you've ever heard the term a Chinaman's chance in hell, and that's where that came from. Because what would happen is they would, the workers, mostly Chinese, would go up on the mountains and they would, plast, they would place the dynamite uh, to blow holes inside of the mountain. And a lot of times the dynamite would go off before they could get down the mountain. So a lot of guys died, unfortunately. So that's where that term came from. So if you didn't know it, now you know it. So I'm pretty sure the SA office is where they would actually come and they would take the gold that they found and they bring it here to get, you know, to get a survey or get, you know, get paid. So the guy that really got this whole thing going was uh, this guy named James Marshall. A man called James Marshall. He discovered gold in January of 1848. And after that, it was history, man. People were just flying into this town, okay? And they, they established it and got the mills running. And gold was struck. There was gold in them, our hills, that's what they would say. Okay, so let's see what else we can find here. Well, that's something in Chinese. Maybe this was the... The Chinese workers probably worked out of here, you know, they had their own, their own area, their own supervisor too, you know, because you got to think about it, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the guys, if they were coming from China, they probably didn't speak English, so they probably had their own little, their own little outfit there that would, they would work out of, somebody who would manage them. The Chinese, okay, it looks like it was the store and bank, so I guess they'd come in here and you, you know, cash in your, your gold and then you buy your wares from the store. You know, supplies. Cool stuff. All right, so this is uh, the Sutter Mill. This is where they say the actual California gold rush began. It all started right here. So let's take a closer look and see uh, what it looks like.
this is going to wrap up our trip here uh, to Coloma. Uh, we're going to head down the road to actual Nevada City. That's another spot along the Golden Chain. Uh, we'll be there uh, maybe at the end of this video. We're going to see what we can do with that. But for now, we're wrapping it up from right here. This is really a great spot for a Saturday afternoon or any, any time of day, actually, any day of the week. I mean, it's beautiful. I mean, it's such a picturesque town, river running through it, so many great things to see, you know. I would say, hey, you know, grab the kitties, grab the wife, throw them in the car for the time of your life. Love it. So along Highway 49, we've stumbled upon a cool town. It's cool California. Population 3,667, cool people. To tell you the truth, I've been uh, kind of wandering around looking for something cool to show you. I can't really find anything. So the name says it's cool, but it ain't so cool. Well, our journey up the Gold Chain Highway, Golden Chain Highway, has landed us here in Nevada City. So uh, we're gonna go check it out, maybe check out a couple of breweries and see what this town has to offer. place we're going to check out here in Nevada City is this, uh, McGee's. Looks pretty good. Haven't been in there before. We'll try it out. Hey, hey Anna, they got strawberry daiquiris for $4. You going to try one of those? Of course. All right. Let's go. So we're gonna head out to another bar. Last bar we were at, bartender was kind of a twat. So whatever, so I'm moving on. I don't like that. Anyway, it's just freaking California, man. What is it with some people, man? It's like the people in the state. I don't know if it's just me. It's like they're in another dimension or something. I don't know. I'm having a hard time to relating to some of these folks. What are you gonna do? Because we're in mining country, we gotta try this mine shaft out. Let's head inside. So we're just walking around a little bit of Nevada City, checking out the vibe, checking out the environment. Um, beautiful day. Uh, I really love the architecture of this place. It's a little busy for uh, what they consider a ghost town. I wouldn't really call it a ghost town. But anyway, we'll, keep, we'll continue on. Last place we're going to check out today. Uh, I'm going to go to the Cheap Crazy Horse Inn. Am I even allowed to say Cheap Crazy Horse these days? I don't know. So this is going to wrap up our video. So we had a pretty cool day. Cool day. Um, you know, we went to, where did we go to? Went to Coloma. Coloma. Okay, that was pretty nice. So so we're at the end of the journey today where we've wrapped it up here in Nevada City. We give you a little bit of a look at that. So Anna, really, what was your highlight of the day? I enjoyed the drive itself. And of course, the meditation and 
meditating squirrel. Yeah, the, that was a pretty cool thing just to see that thing up on a rock meditating. Anyway, so what do you think of California so far? A lot of strange people. Yeah, there are a lot of strange people. I, uh, I think I made that point earlier in the video. And I guess that's the vibe. You well, what are you going to do? Freaking California. Anyway, this is it. Cheers from Beers and Frontiers. We'll see you again next time.